In this video, we're going to do another extra example of curve sketching. So here, our function k of x is ln of x over x squared. So again, start with a domain. So this one, the domain is not going to be all real numbers. So remember, I'll just write, recall here, that if y is ln of x, that's the same as x equals e to the y. Okay, now e to the e to any power, this side is always strictly bigger than zero. So that means that we need x to be also strictly bigger than zero. So we can't plug in a zero or negative numbers inside of a lawn or any log actually. Uh, and that also helps us on the bottom because we can't have zero on the bottom anyway. So our domain is going to be from zero to infinity or x strictly bigger than zero. Okay, so that's our domain here. So we're not going to have any y-intercepts. Okay, so no y-intercept because we need x to be zero there. Um, for x-intercepts, what we want is we want zero equals ln of x over x squared. So that's when zero is equal to ln of x. So if I do the switch, that actually means that x is e to the zero or one. Okay, so we get an x-intercept or a point at one, zero. Okay, so we do have that point. Um, the vertical asymptotes, Okay, we are going to have one. Uh, it's going to be at x equals zero. Um, so if we compute the limit as we approach zero, which we can only do from the right or from the positive side of k of x. So this is the limit as we approach zero from the positive side of ln of x over x squared. Uh, what's happening here is this is approaching, so the bottom is going to zero, but from the positive side. And the top is going to negative infinity. So if you remember the graph of ln, maybe I'll do it in this recall bit. Okay, the graph of ln of x looks like this. Okay, so as we approach zero from the right, the y value the y values are getting very small. Okay, so negative infinity um, divided by a really small positive number, this is going to negative infinity. Okay, so we know as we approach zero, we're gonna, the y values are gonna be going to negative infinity. Okay, now there is actually also a horizontal asymptote. Okay, at y equals zero. Okay, we can't actually show this, but if you look at the limit as x goes to positive infinity, which is the only infinity that we can approach, okay, you could show that this limit equals zero. Okay, so, um, so not in this course. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you that, that that is there. So we do have an asymptote there. Um, there's no symmetry because there's no negative x. Okay, so we can't even check for symmetry here. So we go straight to the first derivative. Okay, so I want to compute k prime of x. To do that, I'm going to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of ln x, or the top, is 1 over x times the bottom, which is x squared, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, times the top, ln x, all over the bottom squared. So this is gonna, so this x on the bottom will cancel with one of those. So I'm gonna have x minus two x ln x over x to the four. And I can factor out an x. Okay, and then if I cancel, I get that the derivative is one minus two ln x over x cubed. Okay, so then the derivative where does this equal zero? Well, that's when the top is zero. So one minus two ln x should be zero, which means that ln x should be one half. OK, 
Okay, so then if we solve, so we're doing the switch in the other way, that means, or actually in the same way, um, so that means e to the one half is equal to x. Okay, so that's our critical number. Um, so this is x is approximately 1.65. Okay, so this is a critical number. Um, now, when the derivative does not exist, that's when x cubed is zero, that's when x is zero, but this is not in the domain. Okay, so we don't, we don't keep that one. Okay, so this is our only critical number. Okay, so when we make our number line, I'm just going to have e to the 1 half, or 1.65 on here. So if I check something smaller, let's say 1, oh, I should also be careful here. So obviously this, I can't, I need something that's bigger than 0, because there's nothing after 0. So if I check 1, and I plug that into the derivative, I'm going to have 1 minus 2 ln of 1 over 1 cubed ln of 1 is 0, so this is actually just 1, so it's positive, which means we're increasing. And if I do, say, 2, this is 1 minus 2 ln of 2 over 2 cubed. Uh, this is going to be a negative number over a positive number, so we get a negative, uh, so we're decreasing here, which means that this critical number is a relative maximum. So we also want its y value, okay, so that's e, oops, um, k of e to the 1 half, okay, so we plug into the original equation, so that's ln of e to the 1 half over uh, e to the 1 half squared, ln of e to the 1 half is just 1 half, and e to the 1 half squared is just e. So we get that y is equal to 1 over 2e, which is approximately 0 0.18. Okay, so we have a relative max at the point that's approximately 1.65 and 0.18. Okay, so we're going to be putting that on our graph. Okay, now we want to do the second derivative and talk about the concavity. So again, I'm going to need the quotient rule. I guess I need my first derivative here. Um, so the derivative of the top is 0 uh, minus 2 over x. Okay, so it's going to be just minus 2 over x times the bottom, which is x cubed, uh, minus the derivative of the bottom, 3x squared, times the top, all over the bottom squared. So if I simplify this, this is negative 2x squared minus 3x squared plus 6x squared ln x all over x to the 6. Okay, so combining these like terms, okay, so this part is actually negative 5x squared and canceling the, pulling out the x squared and canceling, it's going to give me my second derivative is equal to negative 5 plus 6 ln of x over x to the fourth. Okay, so that's my second derivative. So now I want to know where is this zero. So that's when the top is zero. So negative five plus six uh, ln of x. Let me just rewrite that. Okay, so that's when ln of x is equal to five over six, which means that x is e to the five over six which is approximately 2.3. Okay, um, and 
maybe I'll do it up here. Oops. Um, k prime double prime of x doesn't exist. Okay, this is again when x is equal to zero, but again, it's not in the domain. So we don't need to worry about that. So we make our number line here. We put in e to the 5 over 6. Check a point. So maybe we check 1. If I plug that into the derivative, it's negative 5 plus 6 ln of 1 over 1 to the 4. Ln of 1 is 0, so this is negative 5 over 1, which is a negative number. So we're concave down there. And then if I check something bigger, let's say 3, this is negative 5 plus 6 ln of 3 over 3 to the 4. This is going to be a positive over a positive. Okay, so I get a positive, so I'm concave up. So here I have a point of inflection, which means I want the y value. Okay, so that is ln of e to the 5 over 6 over e to the 5 over 6 squared. Um, so that's going to be uh, 5 over 6 divided by e to the 10 over 6, which is 5 over 3. And if you compute, so okay, this is 5 times 6 e to the 5 over 3. If you compute that, <clears throat> I think it's a point about 0 0.16. So we have an inflection point of approximately <clears throat> 2.3 and 0.16. Okay, so that's another point. So we're going to start plotting. Uh, I'm going to make I'm going to make the axes a bit different. Okay, so the these ones are going to go by um, halves, but up here I'm going to go by um, quarters. Okay, so it's just to space it out a bit because things are pretty close together. So we have an x-intercept at 1, and then at 1.65, okay, that's about there, and a 0.18 it's still going to be small. I'm going to put it up a bit though. Let's put it about here. Okay, so this is 1.65 and 0.18. That's going to be our maximum. And then at 2.3, we're a bit lower. Let's put it about here. This is about 0.16. That's our point of inflection. We also know that we approach negative infinity as we get close to zero from the right. And we know there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, so what happens, so from uh, zero to 1.65, or e to the whatever it was, one half, um, it's increasing and concave down. So it's gonna look something like that. Okay, now here, at this point, we have a relative max with the derivative uh, equal to zero, so it's a smooth one, okay, and it's concave down, but now it's decreasing until it gets to 2.3. Okay, so we get a shape like this. I mean, x equals 2.3. At this point, it switches to concave up. Okay, so this is, again, a very subtle change, but now we're concave up, and we approach... Um, y equals zero. So that's what our graph looks like here. Um, so this is a, a point of inflection. Uh, and this is just our x-intercept is at one, zero.